Hey guys, Fear here, and welcome to episode 2 of my Essence of War Battle Report series. Today I am playing Undying Dynasties vs. Rob's RH World Building's Vampire Covenants. You can watch the live stream version of this game on Vale of Ages Twitch and YouTube channels, which you can find down in the descriptions below. Before I begin, I should clear up something regarding the Ninth Age Essence of War mentioned in my UD Faction Primer video. The rules themselves are being written by the Essence of War team members of the Ninth Age staff. Like every team on the Ninth Age, this is a team of people from the Ninth Age community who have volunteered their time, effort, and expertise into making these rules, these free rules for everyone to enjoy. Various other Ninth Age staff, team members, and community members are also involved in helping out with many aspects of this, such as proofreading, layout, HR, PR, and playtesting and report. So if you want to help develop Essence of War, please feel free to get involved. The main Essence of War feedback thread on the 9th Age forum would be the best place to start. I will put links in the description and pin it in the comments. Any feedback you would have from reading the rules, playing the game, and reporting your thoughts on it, it's all really useful for further development of the game. And the team would welcome any and all comments you might have. Veil of Ages is actually a third-party company that was created to make wargaming products that help support the Night Age project. And also, he has a YouTube, a company YouTube, website, Twitch, and Discord server, Patreon, and etc. But that, that does not produce the Essence of War content rules themselves. They are quite closely linked though, as the same guy who runs the Veil of Ages company, that's Patelio, is also a team leader, sorry, is also the team leader for the Essence of War team, and one of the products he is making is the Tabletop Simulator mod, which you will see today to enable people to easily play Essence of War games digitally online. He is also planning many more future products, both physical and digital, to help support the Ninth Age overall, including Essence of War. So thanks to Remy77077 or Agoners for the assist, Please visit his channel as well. Links to Remy's and Patelio's channels will be posted in the description. So let's get on to the lists. To tie in my previous UD faction primer, I have asked to play UD for this game to get a feel of how they actually play on Essence of War. Expect a separate video for UD Essence of War primer soon. So the UD patrol contains a death called Hierarch with open sight, ice and fire, and death is only the beginning. A unit of 15 Skeleton Archers, a unit of 3 Shabtis, and a unit of 2 Skeleton Chariots. The cards are provided by Patelio and the models you see here, and in the game are 3D scans of Watchful Eye Studios Terracotta Army, beautifully painted by Mad App. Links to their websites and channels will also be in the descriptions. Rob is playing Vampire Covenants this time, so we have a game without panic tests. The VC Patrol contains a Vampire Courtier with Case of the Hour and Arise, a unit of 10 Ghouls, a unit of 20 Zombies, a unit of 5 Spectra Hunters. Note that these Spectra Hunters in Essence of War are slightly different from the Fantasy Battles version. Once again, the cards are provided by Patelio, and the art and models you will see are from Rob or RH World Building. Please check him out and consider donating to his Patreon. Links in the description below. Deployment. Rob has won the roll-off for deployment and first turn. Remember, in Essence of War, player who deploys first also chooses sides and plays first. So Ro Rob has chosen to deploy on the side between the house and the woods. He sets up his rules in the woods, supported by the courtier closely behind him. The zombies are front and center, while the spectral hunters with their fly ability hang back behind. As my deployment zone is relatively open, I place my archers on the hill to gain a line of sight, the shanties being what I assume to be both my hammer and anvil unit, front and center, to counter the zombies. The chariot is poised to attempt a potential flank if there would be a battle in the center with my shanties as the core. The DHC hangs back with the shanties to maximize its discipline level to enable my units to march. Vampire Covenants, turn 1. Rob's turn one is quick, he simply shuffles his ghouls and zombies forward as minimally as he can. I assume he's playing safe 
as both my chariots and shanties likely to do a turn 1 charge should he overextend his units. Magic is irrelevant this turn and Rob has no shooting, so we skip next to straight to my turn. Undying Dynasties, turn 1. So for my turn, I can't declare charges, so I go straight into my regular movement. I move my archers up to try and take pot shots at the ghouls as they don't take any penalties for range and movement due to their special rule. I then take note of the ghouls and zombies threat ranges, which I usually calculate as 7 plus the advance rate, which in this case is 11. With that information, I then move my shop piece greater than 11 inches away from both his units. I justify this as I can take a charge from a single unit, but not both, and it's unlikely that he succeeds on that. So I also move the chariots up with the same reason. Lastly, I move my DHC behind my Shanties, hopefully to deny line of sight from the court gear, as I'm afraid of his Hasten the Hour spell. For magic, I realize that moving up the DHC this way blocks line of sight to rob spectral hunters. I was hoping to cast Ice and Fire on it to whittle it down, as I believe this is the biggest threat on the board. Seeing that this isn't possible, I now simply cast Altered Sight on my archers. Shooting then happens and I take pot shots at the rules and manage to take off two models. Vampire Covenants, turn two. Rob double checks the ranges for both the chariots and shoptees and opts to charge the shoptees with both his ghouls and zombies, as an 8 is still a possible charge. He manages to succeed on the ghouls but fails with the zombies. For regular movement, Rob moves up the court here beside the ghouls and gets line of sight to my DHC. The Spectral Hunters then move up the board and threatens all of my units as he now has both range and line of sight to all of my units. Magic happens and Rob manages to cast Haste of the Hour on my DHC and I am unable to dispel it and my DHC takes a wound. Rob has no shooting so we skip to combat. The ghouls attack first due to their agility and perform relatively poorly, dealing only one damage to my shabbies. On my swing back, I deal enough wounds to force a crumble, enough to wipe the unit out. Undying Dynasties, turn 2. I immediately take the double charge on the zombies with my shanties and chariots knowing full well that this is Rob's anvil. I know that it's very likely that a single unit charge will kill him, but I'm hoping to deal enough damage to be able to get him down enough to kill it on Rob's following turn. For regular movement, I move up my archers, hoping to be able to pick off a model or two on the Spectral Hunters with their shooting. I move up the DHC behind the Shanties, completely forgetting the Spectral Hunters have fly. I only realized while making this bad rep that I actually had no reason to move up the DHC this close. All my spells have relatively good range for what they do, and both my threats are already committed and no longer need my general to be this close to enable a march. We then move on to my magic, and I am unable to heal my shanties, but I do manage to take off a spectral hunter with ice and fire. Shooting is ineffective due to the spectral hunter's aegis saves. Combat is favorable to me, as I manage to bring down the zombies. Uh, seven of the zombies with the combined attacks of the chariots and the shanties. Rob manages to deal a single wound to the shanties in retaliation. Rob loses more models due to the undead special rule, bringing down the zombies to nine models. Vampire Covenants, turn three. Rob charges in his court gear into my chariots to support the zombies. And my previous mistake with the DHC comes back to bite me as Rob plays outside my expectations and declares a charge on my DHC. I was actually expecting a charge onto my Shanties with the Spectral Hunters. We skip to magic and Rob manages to cast Arise which brings back a lot of his models. He brings back the Spectral Hunters up to full and the Zombies back up to 13 models. We then straight, head straight to combat and start off with the Spectral Hunters, and they make quick work of my DHC. Rob then takes a couple of minutes to decide how he wants to reform his Hunters, as this is the most crucial unit he has as far as I can tell. His decisions were that he can give my Ant Archers their flags and face the Shopkeeps. If the Archers would have the 
charge of charge. But we're both in the camp that even with the flank charge, the archers aren't likely to do anything to the hunters except maybe get stuck in for two turns. Rob seems to really want to be able to rear charge my shotguns and the chariots, but doing so would mean that I would be able to make a long rear charge onto the Spectre Hunters. Again, we were both in agreement that if I did make a rear charge, he had a more likely chance of wiping out the unit as he now has all five models in contact and more attacks to make. Rob decides to take the gamble on surviving the rear charge and finalizes his repo. We now move on to the combat the zombies, now supported by his courtier. I had actually underestimated the courtier as I felt like most of the generals in SK4 were support and had not expected a combat beast. There was a big chance that I would lose my combat here thanks to the courtier, but luck was on my side and the courtier did zero wounds on his wing. We then resolve the rest of the combat, and all in all, I take off six models, including kills due to crumble from the zombies, and I lose one of the shabbies. Undying Dynasties, turn 3. This is very likely the most crucial turn for me, as if I don't slow down the Spectre Hunters with my archers, I am very likely to lose this turn. So I declare the charge onto the rear of my of the Spectre Hunters and manage to connect. Having lost my DHC, we skip straight to combat. I opt to resolve the combat with the Shabdis first, and I am only worried about the Vampire as it, it, it has the potential to kill one of my chariots too at best. Luckily for me though, the Vampire whips and does absolutely nothing. On my strike backs, I am able to nearly wipe out the zombies, leaving one of it which does nothing to my, to my units. The Undead Rule takes a toll on Rob's units and kills them both, Vampire included. We then resolve the combat with the Spectral Hunters, which I wasn't really feeling lucky about. I strike first, thanks to the Hunter's zero agility, and get a phenomenal result and kill three models with, their ar with the Archer's attacks. Rob strikes back, and at this point I feel like I have it in the bag, even if Rob manages to kill six models with his six attacks. It only forces a draw, leaving both of us stuck in combat. In Rob's strike back, he manages to kill four of the archers, which isn't enough to get that draw, and he loses the remaining two hunters from crumbling. With that, the game ends in my victory. So post-game thoughts, despite how it looks, this game was actually a very mentally taxing one, as both Rob and I are immune to psychology. And we both know that getting stuck in combat here meant getting stuck, no free. So to me, it was a big game of chicken. Whoever got their preferred combats was likely the one to win the game. I feared that the Spectral Hunters here, mainly because of their movement and maneuverability, as getting flanked by that unit meant that they can do 15 attacks at high AP and I'm extremely likely to lose, as they would bring an automatic plus 3 to the combat resolution. In this game, I believe that most of what won me the game were good rolls in terms of saves and the archers. Had they not done that many wounds to the hunters, very likely the game would have ended in draw, as Rob could still manage to charge and maybe kill the Shaktis after they wiped out the archers. He could reform out of line of sight of my chariots after they kill the Shaktis and force a draw. Losing the Death, Hulk, the Death Cult Hierarch was terribly, was terrible to read. If this was a regular game of the Night Age fantasy battles, that might have been a death sentence as I lose a model per unit per turn due to dust to dust. The vampire whipping on two rounds of combat was also a lucky break. If I lost at least one more model of Shaktis or the chariots, I don't think the odds would have been in my favor. So if you think I could have played differently, better, or other comments, please feel free to talk to me in the comments below. Once again, special thanks to Telio for hosting the game, special thanks to Rob RH for building my opponent. Please check out his Patreon for the lovely paper meanings in the video description. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, it really helps me a lot. I've also started a coffee page, please consider getting me a coffee, don't worry, I will never hide my content behind a paywall, I will always publish my videos for free, but a cup of coffee would help me push out more content much faster and hopefully with better quality. 
Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.